on the one hand, they, they've transformed the physical. And that, on the other hand, they've never escaped it. They've embodied and encapsulated what they've seen in that physicality, but what they've seen is not that physicality. It's a symbol, so it's there, glorious. And yet, it's, it's just a symbol. Which means it's there without being it. So if, if you think of it, uh, from the, for example, like, uh, 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 Rothko, when he made his Stations of the Cross, I know it means nothing to most of you who are here, but it's these tableaus that uh, are all black, but they're shades of black. And he worked for three years on three pieces of black. And yet, next time I have a layover in Houston that's longer than four hours, I'm going to get in an Uber and I'm going to go and see those things of black. Because he would throw out, he would do things in black and then throw them out. Like, because he was looking for just this one thing. But the problem is that what he was looking for is the shades of the passion of Christ, the passion of the man God, to be dramatic, right? To be artistic. The passion of of the God who centers into sin and then transforms it. So there has to be there has to be victory and death together. How do you do victory and death together? This drama is that the artist will look to make a unity out of contrasts, and the more that I can get the contrasts to be united, the greater my art. So I can take the weight of stone and turn it into. The gesture of the hand, uplifted. It's almost like like Mary's coming out of the stone. Ah, exactly. You're like, yes, it's a genius. No one else could do that. It takes Michelangelo to do that. But he did it. He takes the greater contrast. I'm going to take the happiness. And what's the contrast with happiness? And what if you were to get them to be united in a single li- liquid where you felt that the two complemented each other? Well, you'd be a millionaire. Because you take this unity out of the contrast, look at the drama. But then that unity out of the, con- out of the contrast that they've seen, it remains physical. So it's dramatic because the artist is feeling the spiritual, touching the spiritual, tasting the spiritual, but it's always in the physical. And that means that You're left panting. You've danced with the truth, but it hasn't made you any better. Think of it like watching a great movie, and you leave feeling like, you know, that awesome feeling when you have a movie. But you're the same person. You've changed in that you, your intentions changed. You've changed in that you know something different but you're still the same person. In order to then be what that movie has said, you've got to change your life. Otherwise, it'll just fade away as entertainment. Right? Think about, like, when you're a little kid, the movie that you, you may watch Rocky, and you were like, I'm going to be Rocky. I'm going to fight. Well, fighting is not the same thing as watching a movie about fighting and wanting to fight. When you actually start to fight, you become a fighter. Before that, you were just inspired, evoked. So the listening to Goretzky's Symphony Number no. Three, listening to Mahler's Symphony of a Thousand Voices, listening to to Beethoven's Ode to Joy. This one is a little bit. And everyone's like, da na da na heaven, joy, fraternity, flowers, hillsides, glory. And then afterwards you're like, it was there. It was there. The, an example would be um, uh, the great actor, English actor. I forget his name now. He's like the, the greatest, uh, Lawrence of Arabia, Lawrence, Lawrence Olivier. Olivier. Lawrence Olivier was... He, they, he did a stunning performance of Hamlet 
and everyone was going nuts. The crowd was just kept on cheering because he just nailed it. And he went back and he didn't come out for an encore. And they kept cheering. So his aides went to get him from the room. He was sitting in the dressing room. And he was his head was in his hands and he was weeping. And they said, Lawrence, wait, why are you crying? Everyone's going nuts outside and you're sitting here crying. And he, you were genius. And he says, I know I was genius. I just don't know how. And that's the drama of the artist. He had captured it. He had nailed it. But it, it's more than him. And it's, the, it's hard. Now imagine you living constantly on that edge of seeking the perfect, finding it, and in the end, having to do it all over again. And having to do it all over again. It's almost like you're like Moses. You take the promised people out of Egypt and you show them the promised land and you die in the desert. And that's what the artist does. He leads us up to the reality of what our relationships could be. But he can't make our relationships be that way. He can just tell us like a prophet and feel it with all the force of his body, but him telling doesn't make it real. So you're on this cusp, it's like there's an invisible glass wall and you hit and you're enamored to be there, but you can't get through it because it's only art. I mean, it's art, glory. It's only art. Drama. And that frustration has led them to kill themselves. Great artists that here. You could do anything. You've made us so joyful. Robin Williams. Right now, he probably manic depressed, but there's a lot of manic depressed people who are artists. There might even be a link between the two. I mean, Robin Williams, when he was on, you know, they didn't even they just let the cameras roll. He just made up the stuff, even the genie stuff in uh, the Disney movie. He just made it up, and then they wrote the, they wrote it, and after he did his craziness, because like he was just so on. Well, that. That type of genius is extremely frustrating because all you are is an art, is a human and just an artist. But for a few moments, you were a god. You know what I'm saying? It says that's what that first talk I showed you about inspiration and ole. When you say ole, it's because of Allah, God. And so you say ole to somebody. It's like there's a spark of divinity in what you just done, but then it's gone. See, you. now. Give thanks that you're not one. If you are one, give thanks. The glory and the drama come together. What I want you to get out of this is the why, and that's that purple sentence. Just remember that. It's always because it's within. Most of us don't do that. We don't really care how we're dressed. We don't care what the colors are in the room. We don't care about clutter. We don't care. Well, this is because you don't care, which is fine, you know. But what you're missing out on is what could be. And so the artists come along and like, don't you see what your body could be? If we decorated that with a rose, no, not in cotton, but in this cotton blend that I found in China, like, you know, and then they dress you. There's that guy, he was talking about how he refused to dress Melania Trump. It was one of these famous things, his name was Ford. And like Tim Ford, I think is his name. And I guess he's just the fashionista guy. And so he creates unique outfits for that person. So when Obama, Michelle Obama wanted to go to some sort of thing at Buckingham Palace, he, he spent, he said it was an honor to dress her. And I think her outfit cost $3,400 for what she wore. But he said, I refuse to dress Melania, Melania Trump, right, because she's a Trump. <laughs> but like, isn't that amazing? That, but you would pay that money for that person because... I am sure that that outfit is probably worth $3,400 because that artist sees her body, sees her skin tones, sees this type of material and brings them together in this harmony that's so perfect that people remember his name. Talk about it. Intelligence within the material gives you the glory, the intelligence, and the drama. It's only clothes, dude. That's all it is. And his life is like, no, it's not. It's so much more than clothes. You're like, it is. It's, I mean, he's talking about soul. Like, I'm putting soul on you by your clothes. <laughs> yeah. 
but it's still only close. Ah, it's the glass wall. Ah, there's not, it's, yeah, but you're not there. It's just closed. No, it's life. So if you're not a, if you're not an artist, you're able to say you don't care about the material. But the more that you're an artist, the more you're not able to say you don't care. And then when someone puts a picture up that they really like in front of you to inspire you, you'll demand that they rip it down just because it offends your view. I did not demand. Most people <laughs> I did not demand don't that care. It taken down. Most people don't care. They're like, it's just, I mean, whatever. But an artist, no, that will just bother them and eat at them. Bother them and eat at them. And then other artists that wanted it there because they were trying to make a point, they'll never forget Don't that the kiss turtle. of Judas. <laughs> the kiss of Judas. <laughs> All right, just teasing. It's an inside joke. All right, you guys. Do you guys get the point? Yeah. Then let's pray. You've been a joy to have this class. Next semester's ethics. Hey, we have ethics at Walsh, too. What? Can we turn this off? Yes, yeah, turn this off.